How's it going guys? My name is Luis and this is my review of Sundered, a brand new indie game coming to PS4, PC, Mac, and Linux this week that's following the trend of classic 2D Metroid games focusing on backtracking and exploration. Usually I talk about gameplay first, but I definitely want to hit the visuals first on this one. Sundered features completely hand-drawn animation for just about everything in the game and it definitely shows. Animations feel fluid and smooth, flowing really well with the fast action combat of the game. The attention to detail with the art is impressive. You can see small dust clouds animate off the steps of the main character, smoke and light flares come out of the robotic enemies, and even the backgrounds are animated with scenery of mist and waterfalls. Sundered is just easily one of the prettiest looking 2D games I've played so far this year. The music is alright, it has some sort of soft tone to it that really gives the feelings of being isolated or alone. It's definitely fitting for a dungeon explorer game like this, but it's usually drawn out by the sound of combat and robot enemies being shattered left and right. Sound design is definitely better though, with great correlating sounds that match up with the action combat. The swift slice of a blade going through the air, or the clanks of your character's weapon hitting a robotic enemy. It definitely helps the beautiful visuals feel even more alive. Now that I've gushed over the visuals, let's take a look at the story. Sundered has you playing as a woman named Esh, who is a nomad mechanic. A long time ago, a war broke out between the Valkyries and the Estachan over the power of the Shining Stone. The war caused a rift in reality that turned all the people fighting inside the cave caverns into monsters. Years later, our protagonist finds herself in these caverns and meets the famous Shining Stone. As you explore the caverns and fight off monsters, you decide whether you want to embrace the dark powers found in the caverns or resist. Now most of the story is told via text dialogue or visual cues, but the really cool interesting thing is that there's multiple endings that last something like Infamous Second Son or Shadow of the Henshaw where the moral choices you make in the story actually influence the ending you get. I've already said that this game feels very much like Metroid and that's because it follows a non-linear path that focuses on backtracking and exploration. When you start the game, you appear in front of a sanctuary. Think of this like a skill tree, you can upgrade your stats here using energy that you collect throughout the game. You can also attach perks that you find in the game. They will usually give you an advantage and a disadvantage. For example, increasing your damage amount, but also decreasing the amount of health you heal when you use a health elixir. The upgrade system is easily understandable, and you can quickly tell where each of the upgrade branches leads you to as you invest more energy into each part. You can see how some of these upgrades affect your stats at the very bottom of the screen. This is where you'll find meters that represent things like your regenerating shield, your main health, elixirs, and energy. You'll see more abilities be added to the meter as you unlock new abilities over time. At the very beginning of the game, you'll be dropped into a cavern that consists of three main sections or three main dungeons, if you will. Each section or region consists of both randomly generated rooms and pre-crafted rooms. The pre-crafted rooms are labeled with icons and you can see what those icons mean by pulling up the map and the legend. Usually they can mean anything from containing a mini boss to containing a shrine that'll have a new power. This is also where you can sort of see the layout for each of the regions, or at least get a feel for where objects will be. The grayed out rooms or areas in between these labeled spaces are randomly generated so when you die, they will actually be slightly different over time. Actually speaking of dying, you're going to die a lot in this game. It's part of the experience and essential to your upgrade system in a way. As you explore the caverns, unlocking new abilities, finding enemies, and collecting the energy from those enemies, you'll have a chance to upgrade your abilities via the sanctuary. Now at any point in the game, you can just press start and return to the sanctuary to upgrade your stats, but most of the time, you'll probably want to keep playing until you're forced to spawn back at the sanctuary when you die. These are the perfect times to reinvest all that energy you've collected to upgrade your character's armor, health, or damage. So basically, you're going to want to keep on playing, grinding, and dying to further upgrade your character, making them much stronger, and making your playthrough easier in the process. The process of completing a region is pretty self-explanatory. It's focused on exploring, you explore different regions and you slowly get stronger as you upgrade your stats and more importantly, find shrines that give you new powers. Using these powers, you can progress further down into the caverns and explore parts previously unaccessible without your new powers. Keep on exploring and you'll find mini bosses and eventually the final boss for that region. Over the about 16 hour journey, you'll experience a total of 4 sections, one of which is unlocked after you beat the first 3. The 3 main sections give you 3 abilities each that give you powers that are completely different from each other. Each region has their own main boss as well and that'll give you a run for your money when it comes to the chaotic dodging and fighting scheme. In fact, each boss has their own little scheme or ritual to them that you'll have to learn to take advantage of in order to defeat them. Now I already gushed how great the game looks, but these bosses are really really good. I just don't want to show them to you to refrain from spoiling the game for you guys. I genuinely really like Sundered. I thought it was engaging, beautiful, and even challenging at times without being frustrating. However, it has some bugs to it. 
Actually, it has quite a few. Something I noticed more frequently in the game were slight stutters when entering new sections for the first time, or on more rare occasions, sections I had been to already. It seemed like the game was still trying to load randomly generated areas while I was about to enter them, causing a slight loading pause. Speaking of loading, when you load a save fresh from the main menu, you'll hit a pretty lengthy load screen, at times almost hitting one minute. That really does suck, but luckily it only happens when you start a fresh load of a save, so basically when you first launch a game, but if you're entering rest mode on your PS4 and just continuing on your save, then you're pretty much good and you're maybe not going to ever see it. The one weird problem I had though is that the game was crashing a few times at my first few hours, at least three times in the first four hours of my playthrough. It seems to only happen when I die and respawn. The game didn't crash every time I respawned, but I noticed that it only happened when I died. Sundered has been good about saving my progress when that happens, but it sucks to have to go through the whole minute long loading screen all over again just because I have to do a fresh load of my save. Sundered is a lot of fun and it's entertaining, but it still has some rough edges to it that definitely need some polishing. There were even a few times I noticed a bit of a frame rate drop or a slowdown when a ton of enemies were on screen at once. I mean tons of enemies flying in the air while others were shooting lasers at me. I didn't get the chance to play the PC version where the hardware may be a bit more tolerable, but on my PS4 Pro, that was my experience. I normally don't find myself having a lot of patience to play these Metroid-style exploration games, but Sunder kept me locked in despite the handful of tech issues I experienced with it. But like I mentioned before, fair warning, this game seems pretty buggy at times, and while I hope the developer is able to fix what seems like simple tech issues in the future, I can't really guarantee it, and so I wanted to mention it. That's my review for Sundered on PS4, PC, Mac, and Linux. If I missed your question in the review, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below, or just hit me up on Twitter and Instagram and I'll do my best to respond to your question. If you enjoyed the content and the review, why not give it a like, subscribe for more content just like this, and share with your friends, it helps my channel grow, and I really do appreciate it. As always, thank you all very much for watching, hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.